Hey guys, this is Johnny D from Doro and Brittany Fox, and you're listening to Backstage Access, where the real show begins. And I know these guys, so I know exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> Keep tuned in. Hi, this is Chris with Backstage Access, and we have a very special guest with us today. Please welcome longtime friend and drummer for Brittany Fox, Doro, and also kick the In Excess experience, Johnny D. Well, hello, Johnny. Welcome to Backstage Access. How are you this morning? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. You've got so many things going on, and currently you just got back from a tour in Europe with Doro. Didn't you play That's in two? Right. Didn't you play in two different countries in two different bands on the same day? I did. Yeah, I just pulled that off, uh, and that was completely uh, self-propelled. Uh, you know, I, I didn't have any real assistance on that one. I just happened to have a flight, and uh, I didn't even have a set time when I uh, started the whole process. But I ended up uh, making it to LA from Belgium. I left uh, left the stage in Belgium at a festival with Doro. I went right to my hotel room, grabbed a shower, packed up my stuff, got in a van, drove to Brussels Airport, uh, flew from Brussels to Frankfurt, then got on a plane that went from Frankfurt to LAX, and uh, that was about ten and a half hours, so I caught some sleep on there, and then I got up. Uh, Disembarked in L.A., got uh, got held up at baggage claim, which was really horrible. I was going to try to like pull the trip off without a, a checked bag, but I just couldn't because I had like you know three weeks worth of stuff in there from the Doro thing. And uh, two friends of mine from Sweden who live in L.A. now picked me up, got in a car, started basically barreling ass down to uh, Irvine Meadows on the 405, and then you know the typical. Uh, California traffic kicked in and the, you know the minutes started ticking away really quickly and I was totally like uh, paranoid I'm not gonna make this you know so I right. finally with about 10 miles and you know 10 minutes to spare I told uh, my friend to get out of the driver's seat so I jumped in there and I just like <laughs> hauled ass and uh, straight into the venue just blew by all the security people they knew I was coming so that was good and I literally parked the car and walked onto the stage and uh, you know and the stage as I was bending down to tighten the bass drum pedal on the on the rental kit the stage started revolving towards the audience and uh, you know counted off the song and that was it all for a five or six song set it was insane but it was really fun well I'm glad that you made it where are you now I'm at home in Philly for uh, one more day and tomorrow uh, we all reconvene Doro uh, band that is we reconvene in Columbus and uh, start our little mini tour on Saturday uh, in Columbus Ohio okay and you've got some east coast dates um, next week as well Yes, we'll be going from Columbus to, uh, I believe, Rochester. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Londonderry, New Hampshire on the 27th, then Poughkeepsie, Stafford Springs, Connecticut, uh, October 1st in Baltimore, and the October 2nd in Lakewood, New Jersey at the Food Truck uh, Carnival Festival. Um, but the only problem with that is is that uh, I had the Monsters of Rock cruise booked, so I'm going to have to leave the tour a day early and fly back to California to get <laughs> on the ship with Brittany. And uh, my drum tech, um, Jeremy Kling, is going to fill in for the last show for me. So that works out pretty good, hopefully. Uh, won't be anybody disappointed with by that. So now you you mentioned the um, Rock Carnival in New Jersey. This is a new festival. Have you heard anything about you know what we can expect from it? Uh, actually, 
I, I saw a lot of um, promo for it last year. This was the first time I heard about it, and it looked amazing. It was like three days with all a really cool mix of different style bands, old and new, and all kinds of other, uh, like, last year there was a different title and a different location. It was the food truck carnival and rock fest or something, and now they call it the, you know, uh, the rock carnival and food truck fest. I don't know, but uh, food trucks everywhere, um, you know, rides for kids. I mean, it's a little bit like a family type uh, weekend hang. But uh, I did hear that the the new location is much better. I think it's in a in a stadium now, a small okay. uh, one of the smaller sport team stadiums. So it should be really cool. They have about three stages and uh, tons of bands and tons of stuff to do. Right, sounds like a great time. Yeah. Sure. Now, can you talk to us a little bit about the latest Doro DVD release, Strong and Proud, sure. Thirty Years of Rock yeah. and Metal? This one also has a, a two hour documentary documentary behind the curtain inside the heart of Doro so that kind of gives you an insider's look tell us a little about about the whole package yeah it's well firstly uh, it's an amazing package I mean it's I've uh, you know held it in my hand and, and just really kind of felt all the stuff Doro does she really puts a lot of time and effort into it and cares extremely uh, you know about her fans and the way you know it's presented and also all of her stuff has that extra touch to it but this thing goes beyond obviously it's a huge uh, landmark for her but for all of us as well it was just super uh, fun time and uh, and a special thing for everybody with like we got to play with a lot of special guests again and uh, doing some you know songs with other artists like Udo and you know the band got to play a couple accept songs which was a real highlight for us and just different stuff than we usually do we did a second to sure. the two shows in Dusseldorf with a classical uh, accompaniment and uh, just really all around great time but you know the fact that was we, we celebrated that anniversary with you know overall like two or three tours uh, you know over here in, in Europe and uh, of course the two main shows in Germany so there was a lot of stuff going on and a lot of stuff compiled to go into that you know I even threw in some of my personal GoPro shots and just nice. little stuff from you know fun crazy travel days and whatnot so the documentary is is killer on its own and i love those kinds of things uh so seeing that on there is great plus um the live music was really well recorded um and well you know mixed and and mastered and uh it's 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 chock full of uh, Doro goodness, man. I mean, it's like six or seven hours worth of stuff. Wow. So any real fan can can just really dig in, and it's just a cool release because uh, you know there's so much there. There's photos, there's stories, there's the documentary, there's right. behind the scenes stuff, and the concerts themselves were were fantastic because uh, fans came from all over the world, uh, and uh, we had a you know like a central hotel hotel sponsored and uh, everybody stayed there we partied into the night at the bar and just made it a really cool fan event and a real special time for Doro I know it those sorts of things knock her for a loop because there's so much stress right. uh, and everything to, to to plan and perform in the end but man she, she loves it and um, we, I think we pulled it off really well and like I said it's a super super um, super proud out of this one because it uh, really, you know, comes off very well and uh, we're all happy with it. Awesome. Now, you've, yeah. you've been with Doro for a long time, like over 23 years now? That's correct. <laughs> what has it yeah. been like working with her all those years and getting to play, you know, all over the world? It's been phenomenal, actually, um, and it just, the weirdest thing is, is that it, it kind of gets better. I know that sounds like bullshit, but it really, <laughs> uh, 
I think we just over so many years we've just like honed this thing down to uh, now we know each other so well and it's almost like we don't even have to think about you know what we're doing we just kind of do it and, and everybody pulls together as a team I mean she really brought a kind of little family vibe together and uh, and that's her specialty I mean she's very um, vibe oriented you know she's very into people who are positive and you know who do a great job and right. just make make touring fun because it can be a drag uh, just you know travel alone can be a drag right. but also playing gigs you know uh, can be tough sometime in other countries where you don't have your own equipment I mean there's you know pitfalls and everything but sure. uh, you know in the beginning we didn't really tour that much when I joined in 93 uh, we did a, a really great tour in Germany and uh, a lot of sold out shows she had a record in the charts it was like fantastic I was like this is amazing you know because it was in the 90s the rock scene was basically dying a death over here in the states and uh, going over there and seeing this like you know that it was still breathing and kicking ass was like great for me because I, you know, right. I I was kind of a bit down and not knowing what to expect. But we did that tour and we didn't really continue after that. I mean, she didn't do any shows in America. She lost her deal here a uh, time before that, and um, so it was a short tour and it was so great. I just thought, like, man, it would have been awesome if it was longer. Uh, and then, you know, next thing you know, she's working on another record and, you know, another tour comes up and that one was a little bit longer but not much and then we started working with a guy who just started getting us to branch out. I think we were with an agency who was uh, really great at the time but they wouldn't take any real chances to go outside of the areas that really, you know, were organized and paid well. I mean, sometime in the, in the you know, in the 2000s, there was this really, like, people had to go out there and kind of uh, pioneer a bit, um, sure. just hitting other countries and trying to deal with smaller promoters because all the big ones were going, you know, their businesses were going down. So uh, we found ourselves kind of just getting out there and doing doing these, you know, sort of punk rock gigs where we just show up and, and, you know, hope for the best type of gear or, you know, but it led us to go to countries not only any of us had been to before, but even like Dora Warlock never even played in. I mean, we went to Japan for the first time. We went to China twice. We went to Russia, which was like, oh my God, you know, like a whole new audience for her and a whole new market. And we've since been there like six or seven times. We just came back from a five day tour in the Ukraine, which we've never done before. So um, I think those times paid off and built the band back up again and allowed us to basically spread out uh, throughout the year and work more and uh, being part of her live band uh, that just meant uh, you know more work for us and uh, and more good times on tour and, and just putting the Doro name out there again and so it was uh, it's been a fun ride over that time I would say in the beginning very scattered work and then in the last 10 years man we've gotten very you know very busy and a, a lot more opportunities which has been great right. cruises, all that stuff you know <laughs> sure now is there a country that you haven't played in that you would like to visit with the band uh, man I don't know we've <laughs> had you know there's a few in South America we haven't been to like Chile would be one that I heard is fantastic and um uh, lo would love to just go back to Japan, you know. Yeah. Um, China was one we did about four shows there, which, you know, was a, a totally different trip and uh, probably could be, um, you know, we could probably go back there and tour for a few months if we really, you know, worked on it. But uh, there's, I think, a few smaller places that um, I think we did one gig in Poland. We might have one more coming up on the winter tour this okay. year, but there's 
Uh, I can't think of anything offhand other sure. than Chile, okay. uh, but uh, yeah, I mean any any and every place where <laughs> bands that are really um, you know passionate and into it and that are waiting to see Doro. I mean, it's still. I always say the more you travel, the more you see around this world, the more you realize you haven't seen, you know, it just makes it uh, that much more uh, real that you're, wow, you know, right. you know what? never been there. And uh, you see other bands go there and I'm like, oh man, lucky, you know, you guys <laughs> are lucky to get to go there. But um, India, we had a couple offers to go there and that fell through. So I would definitely love to... Um, I know the the technical aspect of touring there would be a nightmare, but right. uh, I would really like to see the country and just experience the, you know. Sure. And some of, uh, you know, like Israel and stuff, we've never been to Tel Aviv. I know a lot of bands are going there. It's a really uh, strange time, you know, sure. and all the crap that's going on in the world. But it, I really felt in the Ukraine that, like, you know, the music really brings people together and even in the you know even though they're struggling at the moment they um they just want to have fucking fun like everybody else does and forget about their problems for for a while so it was really cool to see that and um man really felt the appreciation from those fans there you know we just just stood at the end of the stage and signed hundreds of autographs you know yeah that's awesome yeah, it was, it was really, really cool. Now, what about your other band, Britney Fox? Now, mm-hmm. that was kind of reformed in 2015. How did all that come together? Um, I guess you could say it was always sort of in the background there, kind of being talked about, and just really the the you know the main uh, catalyst was just that you know I mean the band needed to be out there doing something because there's you know there's just like need for that music um if you look at that time in in rock or whatever I mean there was you know we're still being played on on for example hair nation or for right. you know serious and uh vh1 or whatever video channels still play <laughs> videos you know we'll throw girl school or something on every once in a while and with social media you get stuff from fans all the time and so really i think the band was um prematurely you know packed in i mean there was no reason why we shouldn't have been touring all these years or at least doing the festivals. I mean, that um, that opportunity to do cruises and like these package tours came up, you know, about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago when all the other bands from our genre started to um, build their things back up, you know, and we always, we were always a bit dysfunctional. We had member changes and whatnot and it was really difficult for us to bury old you know wounds and stuff so it was like you know what are we doing and like there's this thing that needs to be you know uh, alive and out there you know and uh, not only for us but for the fans that really dug it and so we were constantly trying to make it work and it wouldn't work with you know, original lineups, even though we tried and talked and things just kind of always fell off the rails. And uh, so basically what you have now is the only real uh, thing that can can exist or does exist at the moment. And I think it's, you know, the best representation of the band that we could present for fans and people that dug our music. And uh, so, yeah, we're just trying to um, make up for lost time, I guess you could say, because we did really miss out on a lot. And I had, you know, a lot of work with Doro over the last 23 years. And, it, you know, I just really put in the time to try and make it happen this time. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a long road 
back, but I feel like it's worth it. And uh, the fans that have seen us or hear the songs again seem to agree. So that's really why why we're doing it. Okay. And you were at the Hair Nation Festival, and you're going to be at the upcoming Monsters of Rock cruise in October as well with that, right? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And how did the yeah. show at the Hair Nation Festival go? That was good. I mean, that was the one where I turned up uh, off of off of an airplane right, right <laughs> the stage, and uh, it was super fun, and uh, it was super hot that day. Our slot was pretty early. Uh, another testament to the fact that we need to, you know, get out there and get the name back in people's minds and, and prove that we're a great live band so we can move up on these bills and stuff like that because, you know, we were, you know, we were a band that sold a million records and, uh, like I said, we weren't around for a while so people forget you, but we're working on that. That show was really cool. Um, they had a revolving stage, so there was literally no changeover times in between bands. I mean, they were like rapid fire. Right. So, you know, you fit more bands on but the uh, bands get sort of shorted on set times. We sure. only played, we had 30 minutes allotted, and I think because I was a few minutes late, we had to uh, drop one song. So, but it was cool, you know, we did a lot of interviews that day, getting the, the name of the band back out there, and that's that's what we do it for. And just uh, whatever I've seen from the audience perspective was positive, so we're hoping to build on that. Fantastic. Now, I didn't know, but um, I was told that you are part of an In Access tribute band as well. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, first of all, how do you have the time for all of that? But how did you get hooked up with that, and how often do you play with them? Yeah, uh, the band's called Kick, the In Excess Experience, and um, I got hooked up with them through my real dear friend, Corey Massey, who is a singer, and he's a fantastic singer. I had a couple bands with him. Back in the days when he lived in uh, South Jersey, he moved to Florida and then moved to South Carolina. And uh, he was just, you know, he's another guy that's constantly busy. He's got a few other projects. He's working on original music and he's got a couple cover bands. And I think he just had an idea that sparked in his head one day after seeing uh, an Aerosmith tribute or something at the House of Blues down there. And um, he had actually auditioned or did that In Excess TV show where they picked a new singer. Okay, yes, yeah, sure, I remember uh, that. Yeah, and he didn't really get very far, which I thought was odd because his voice is excellent. And if you see this band, you might say the same thing, that like, wow, this dude, you know, he nails it. He actually looks a little bit like Michael Hutchins as well. But so he threw the band together and had the idea. He got a bunch of local guys, musicians that he knew from from Greenville down there, and they're fantastic dudes, great players. And um, they had a little bit of trouble with a few drummers, just trying to find the right guy and a professional person that could really do the gig. And um, so after a, a, a few gigs, he called me up and he's like, look, man, you know, I really want you to do this gig. I think it'd be great. And um, I'm willing to book gigs around your schedule because, you know, it just doesn't make any sense to play shows uh, with a, you know, less than whatever drummer that, right. uh, sure. you know, let's do this thing right. We'll do big shows when we can get them and we'll, we, you know, we'll just make it pro. And I said, dude, I would love to. I love you and your voice and, of course, in excess music, which even at the time I really loved, but I never knew how many great songs those guys had, you know. So I had to learn a lot of deeper cuts and other songs for this gig. And I was like, man, this stuff is absolutely killer and the drumming on it is always great John Farris was excellent and um just learning his stuff and grooving and playing stuff that isn't, you know, it's not super heavy at all. It's very um, groove-oriented dance, right. you know, yeah, dance different thing. feel. And so it's totally cool. It's a great gig. I love the guys. I love the music. Um, just real fun. And, uh, yeah, so we play 
Uh, we have two gigs coming up in October because I have basically like three weeks off. So I just, you know, I got a lot better at scheduling <laughs> my stuff now, even though I have a couple conflicts. Um, I haven't had any, you know, real horrible stuff yet. So um, <laughs> I'm just digging, keeping busy and changing it up here and there. It really seems to bring a freshness back into the other projects when you, you know, jump from one another other and not and not only that but to um just it's pretty funny to see how each band exists or coexists and and works <laughs> in a mysterious ways you know what i mean but sure. uh, it's it's pretty fun and and um you know, I'm no spring chicken anymore, but it, I think somehow it's keeping me, keeping me going. Sure, keeping you young. Now, yeah. I also heard you have a kind of a special project in the works, um, a tribute CD that you're working on. Can you tell us about yes. that? Yeah, I just started um, cutting some drum tracks for it, and uh, I guess the inspiration was just all the losses that we've been taking lately with uh, a lot of our heroes and musical inspirations um you know and that would be if you're a fan of you know classic rock and metal and stuff and you know losing dio and lemmy and all our heroes and bowie and just all these people that were so huge to us to uh that we grew up on and the music uh stays but you know now the the creativity or the person or the live opportunities are, are going away and uh, I just wanted to pay tribute to that and the music that I loved and grew up on as a kid you know I would yeah. sit in my basement and play drums to basically teach myself how to drum along to a lot of these classic records and uh, so the way I'm going about it is uh, basically the same way I thought it was really cool I would take the you know one of my favorite songs and uh, just play the track and play drums on top of it and record my drums and then go back and have like my friends or guests fill in the musical holes and uh, you come up with a whole new track of, uh, you know, of these classic songs. Like I don't want to change them up too much. I want them to be rocking sort of in my style. Right. And uh, just pay tribute to that, the great songs. And even some of the artists that were lesser known, there's a lot of people, you know, side musicians or guys like me that are part of a band, but not necessarily, you know, when you think of Dio, you think of Ronnie right. and uh, the other players are great. But if somebody were, you know, Jimmy Bain, for example, um, just passed away as right. well. Bass player from Rainbow, from Dio. I mean, just the guy was a legend to us musicians, to many bass players. So uh, I want to pay tribute to that type of thing as well. So I'm picking some obscure tracks, some that are just really, you know, because this person meant a lot to me as a musician. And uh, yeah, so I think it's really a cool, special thing. I mean, there's many tribute CDs and cover CDs out there, but this is just one for me, a personal thing that I hope people will dig. And um, just the first thing I've ever done from inception to completion, like all in my hands and uh, being able to take the songs and play the drums and play a little guitar and maybe I'll even sing one or two and um, you know pick who I want to play on it all that stuff it's really fun for me and I, I can't even believe I've never done anything like it before I mean it's taken me this long but um, you know on the time right I guess you do what you do right now that sounds awesome and we'll look forward to uh, hearing that when when that comes to a completion yeah, now, um, we had one last question for you because mm -hmm. um, you're outside of Philly, so how much of an Eagles fan are you, and what do you think of Carson Wentz? <laughs> <laughs> um, I honestly have, like, my fandom in sports has declined over the years, and that's, I'm not, you know, really proud to say that. I'm still a diehard Eagles fan. I mean, I'm more of a, you know, a bandwagon jumper at this point, which is, you know, horrible, but I just... 
I don't know. I kind of lost interest, not only being away, um, you know, I never played football or baseball or anything. I'm not the typical American sports head. <laughs> I'm not into basketball. My father was born in Italy and played professional soccer his whole life. So, um, you know, any sports that I am into, um, I'm just basically, I'm not like overtly fanatical about them. So I love the Eagles. I'll watch them play when I'm at home. Uh, I love the Flyers, um, the rest of the stuff, you know, but it's really become such a, a faceless kind of thing unless you're really, really dialed in to the players and stuff. I miss the old days of like, you know, Broad Street Bullies and, the, you know, the teams that you knew would come back year and year and you could just really yeah. like know everybody and it's almost like the music business, you know, bands are still playing and they're still playing those songs and wearing, you know, <laughs> those those jerseys and stuff, but it's like, who the hell is that bass player, you know, so and who's the quarterback, I don't know, but right. let's, just, let's hope that we see a good game, you know, or hear some good music and that's, uh, that's just the time we live in, you know, so there's really not much you can do about it, either, you know, turn it on or change the channel or, you know, just enjoy it while it's there exactly well thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today we really appreciate it and best uh, of luck with everything you've got going on you're certainly one of the busiest men in music <laughs> oh, thanks man i appreciate you guys as well i always like to see your uh, your stories and stuff online so thank you for uh, for inviting me